I know you as Ebony Rainford Brent, but what is your full name mm -hmm. again? Yeah, my mum went a bit wild, didn't she? Ebony Jewel, Cora Lee, Camellia, Rosamond Rainford Brent. And your, it was just your mum that came up with this? It was, yeah. So I had three older brothers and she, she always wanted a girl, so she saved up a load of names. That, yeah, uh, there was more actually, uh, Dion Randall something, but they told her just to calm down. So you are a World Cup winner, an Ashes winner. Uh, you're also the first black female to play mm. for England. Did it ever occur to you that you would be making history? Uh, when I first got told, I remember it was our media manager when I first made my debut, who told me and I was like, no, nah, it can't be. And I think the reason why I thought that is, one, growing up in a multicultural London, it, it just seemed odd that in, two th in 2007 that, I, you know, I was the, the only, I thought maybe for the last maybe 10 years or something, but I didn't think the only. Um, and then as you get a bit older, I suppose you realise the significance of a milestone. Um, I don't think I realised when I played, but as you sort of start to finish and you realise as well that the game needs more diversity, um, it is important that, you know, as long as I breathe, I suppose, that I can represent and show what is possible and that th those milestones have been made. Your journey is one of sporting excellence but you've had to endure some hardships mm. in your life as well. Mm. You had health problems and you also had, you know, the death of your brother. Mm. Um, how did that have an impact on you? To lose a brother through a kind of a tragic way, you know, knife crime, um, and to lose it so young, I think, I don't know how to describe the feeling, but it's just like a void. I actually, my memory loss is pretty heavy between that period, just because you kind of black it out. So between the age of five, five to about? To about 10-ish. I think actually my first major memory is hitting a cricket ball. And I don't really remember, I don't really have memories other than looking at a picture. I can't really remember anything prior to that. So, you know, I think my way of dealing with it was sport. My, it, it, it's, you know, really messed up my family. Um, you know, my mum had to, you know, deal with losing a son. My other brothers went down, you know, issues with prison and crime and had to deal with addictions and stuff like that. So being a young child, kind of watching all that around wasn't easy. Um, wasn't easy, but then that's where, again, resilience comes in, where, you know, that's one thing that I look at my mum and she's still standing. She's been through a lot. She's had three sons and, and to see what's happened, you know, in the family, but she's still smiling and she's still always saying, strive for your best. So, you know, tough things happen to a lot of us. Um, it's just about how you kind of bounce back. You've seemed to make the, uh, the transition from, you know, from a sports person mm. to, I don't know, you, you've got your own podcast, you're going to be an author, you're a broadcaster for TMS, and you, you've, you've made it seem so easy. How did you do that? <laughs> I don't know about easy. <laughs> I'm sure, um, I'm sure like a lot of things. No, because some sports people find it very difficult. Mm. They go into depression afterwards yeah, when yeah, they stop yeah. playing. So how did you I avoid you the, all of that? The, the best thing that happened to me was, in some ways it felt bad at the time, but I had a really unfortunate injury um, towards the back end of my career. Where I stepped back in the nets, just accident tripped on the ball, and I ended up having to have about eight months out. I was in a boot. Um, and it was the first time that I thought, what am I going to do when I finish? It was the first time that it, you start to evaluate where are you going to go. And I just started to put feelers out, a bit of charity work, a bit of volunteering, a few little bits and bobs. And it was those leads that when I decided to retire, manifested in jobs and opportunities. So, but if I didn't have that, I think I could have easily, you know, you finish and you lose your identity and you don't know what you're gonna do. So it was a bit of luck, I have to say, um, and blessed with the fact that I like to talk a lot, that <laughs> <laughs> someone called me up saying, can you get involved, so yeah. Cricket has an image of it being quite exclusive. Mm. So how did you get involved with a, a sport like this mm. in the beginning? Pure luck is how I got in to start with. Is um, And actually, I, was, I got introduced to the game. I was playing down the road from here at the Oval. Um, uh, started playing out on my school playground. Someone, a West Indian guy came into the school to try and get more state school kids. And I suppose I directly related to him because, you know, my mum was Jamaican and he had that sort of... Um, energy and I was hooked into what he taught us but it was a massive leap from playing there and then when I got talent scouted to to come and join this sort of environment Surrey junior England it was very it was like almost chalk and cheese the two worlds um, it wasn't easy as well um, and what that's you find easy about it yeah two things I think one side it is my community my friends were a bit like why are you going into that very stiff very white world um, and I got a lot of peer pressure sort of questioning why I was going that way and the other side is you know, I think there was also a lot of lack, lack at times of cultural understanding of different types of people and, you know, some comments would be made, things like that, which would really unsettle you. And I, you know, I struggled internally. I'm, outwardly, I looked OK, but internally I would struggle with identity and where I fit. I didn't feel like I fitted in any world. 
and you'd have to overcome these things. But I think one thing that one of my friends said to me is when you're one of the only or one of the first in any environment, whatever it is, it might be female, it might be, you know, different, you have to have a bit of, of a tough skin. Uh, my mum was good at that. My mum's strong kind of Jamaican woman was kind of like, deal with it, toughen up. Um, and gave me some sort of tools. I wouldn't say it definitely wasn't easy, and I think it still, you know, it takes a knock on you as a person overall, but the resilience, yeah, I had to have some to be able to handle both of those challenges. So how does she feel about her little girl <laughs> playing for England? Yeah, winning she... Winning the Ashes, <laughs> World Cup winner. Yeah, my mum... Board member. <laughs> yeah, my mum loves it. She, um... She stole, well, not stole, but I remember when I should say stole, but the first ever newspaper when I first made my debut, I think they were the, the Metro paper that was being, my mum, like, stole the whole thing and was, like, chucking it around. This is my daughter, my daughter, you know. She was, she absolutely loved it, and she's so proud. And even now, I took her out to the park the other day, and then we hit some balls and stuff, like, kind of going back to how it was when we were younger. Um, and, you know, she, yeah, she's proud, but she's invested as well, and I think that's what's really nice. You know, a lot of our parents put in for us. My mum worked nights and used to come and tra train with me all through the day and not sleep for, like, two or three hours. So part of my success is her success, which is really nice.